offer some context about why I believe and believed then that AI is critical in the materials world. The first thing I'll say before I get to slides is that it is my belief that we are hopeless as a planet if we cannot clean up the materials we use. Whether it's concrete or plastic or the lubricants and coatings and paints and cosmetics, all of these chemicals produce a great degree of carbon and present tremendous risk to our environmental goals so that our kids can have a safe, healthy planet. So citrine started out of a desire to create a more sustainable materials and chemicals industry. So if we talk about chemicals, materials, packaging, physical products and physical goods, what does that mean? Well, this is where things get much more interesting in my view, but also much, much more challenging. The first question is, so you've got your doctor. Well, what do doctors learn from? There's a huge corpus of medical information out there. You've got the MCAT, you've got textbooks, you've got standard publications by the American Medical Association and other international bodies that say, if you have chest pain, and if you have high blood pressure, and if you have pain on your left side, and if you're feeling lightheaded, you're having a heart attack. And like, there's a list of things that are written down that people understand. So there is data out there, there's information, they have authoritative sources. And the expectation of what you get from your doctor, I know all of us would love our doctors to say, well, in 10 years, we will have a treatment that's a lot better for this. But the thing you're asking your doctor for is not the future, it's what is the thing that will solve my problem today? I have a stomach ache, I don't really wanna know what's going to solve it in 10 years, I want to know what's going to solve it today. So, how do we teach a computer to be a doctor? And my font is tiny. I will just, we'll just skip the font. Um, the, the way we train a doctor, the way we taught the computer to be a doctor, is we taught it everything about text, and then we proceeded to tune it to be extremely um, aware of those specific examples. Use the patterns in text to get there. The problem is, you started with a lot of text, right? So you're probably seeing where I'm going. In materials and chemicals, we have a different set of problems than the medical field. And so the unique challenges they, that are presented in our field are chemistry and materials are not just trying to do the best with what we have today. You wanna do some of that. But when we talk about next generation precious metal refining, we talk about next generation paints and coatings. We talk about next generation uh, food packaging materials or other product packaging materials. You're not just asking for what is the thing that I can do today. It's how do I develop tomorrow? How do I push the boundaries on what we're doing? And we lack data. I guarantee you every one of your companies is relatively unwilling to share your proprietary materials data into the world. Right, that's just, I'm, I'm guessing, if, if, you, if you are, please come talk to me, I'd love to, to work with you on that. Most companies are not. And so, and then of course, in materials and chemistry, every subfield is different, right? So I sort of jammed together paints and coatings and alloy science and precious metals and ceramics and semiconductors, but every one of them has an expertise that is required for it. So, how do we solve this problem? Well, I can't generate data. Data is expensive, right? It's, it's very, very expensive in some fields and just pretty expensive in other fields. It's certainly not Reddit, you know, free data that people are posting all the time. We need to train an AI like we train a human. So the first thing we do is we talk about how we train a human. Well, how do we do that? Well, you go to high school and you take a basic chemistry course. Basic um, rules of thumb, basic chemistry, relatively straightforward. Then you go to college. If you're like me, you take organic chemistry. You memorize a bunch of stuff, still mostly from textbooks. And then you get into your early graduate work. The best scientists in your companies mostly have graduate degrees in, in a lot of cases. This graduate work is extremely important because it lays a theoretical foundation for a PhD student when they get to that phase to then do what the machine learning system is doing, what the AI system is doing, and that is learning from data. That's the reason you never ask a PhD student how long it is before they graduate, because they need to learn a certain amount from the data 
and it's variable for everybody. And so we teach a computer the same way. Rather than trying to learn the entire universe from data alone, we learn first from the basics, basic chemistry, electron counting rules, crystallinity information, things like this. We build that into our platform from the outset. Then we hand it over to expert scientists who are able to say, you know, I'm working on, but given, given that Tanaka is the, is the new partner that, is, uh, that, that was on stage, we were working on, on precious metal refining. And we understand that there's a separation process we want to do. And as a scientist that does work in this space, I know that for me to separate gold from iron, or whatever else might be in there, I need to use these kinds of processes. You don't need to learn that from, from just the data. You have scientists that are very valuable running around your company. You should learn from their knowledge. Then you can get fancy if you have, for those of you who know things like density functional theory or molecular dynamics, these sort of molecular simulation technologies, bring those in. Connect them into the AI. Give a diverse data set to these systems. And then finally, you use AI to learn from the data, refine those relationships, and allow you to proactively design new materials tailored to your particular outcome. I want to highlight a couple example use cases of ways this has actually been used at Citrine customers with some detail. The first is one that actually, I, I'll say, high point of pride for me at this company. We, we were working with a major adhesives maker, um, and they had a forever chemical problem on their hands. You probably all are familiar with PFAS, PFOA, these uh, materials, these chemicals that are a huge source of liability uh, on the business side and just kind of bad for the world on the, on the personal side. They had a five-year plan to remove PFAS from one of their most common adhesive products. For those of you who live in the US, probably in your house or in your apartment. They were able to do it in just nine months by using an AI-guided approach. It's an ingredient substitution. Similarly, one of our customers was able to reduce the cost of an automotive polymer while simultaneously maintaining all of its properties but reducing its density. They were able to reduce it by a penny per pound. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but for those of you who live in the materials and chemicals industry, you know that kind of margin is hard to come by. It's really hard to reduce your costs. We've also seen the ability to predict things like toxicity petroleum-derived ingredients, improve performance and lower cost. Because what these AI systems are very good at and what humans are truly awful at is multi-objective optimization. And so by being able to elevate all of these things together, what we are able to do using AI is, honestly, it is probably better than what a human scientist can do on their own. A human scientist and an AI together are leagues better than either one on its own. And what we're doing is we're allowing the scientists to project their expertise into new space, make better business decisions, better balanced decisions, and move forward in a way that is productive for both the world and for every company that needs to innovate.